Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. This video is based on answering questions of my student. So let me allow Anu to ask first question over here. So please ask your question. Hitesh sir, in last class, you have said that we don't use the BJT in reverse active region. What is the reason for it? So question is based on why should we use BJT in forward active and why don't we use BJT in reverse active? See, it is not like we don't use BJT in reverse active, but there are some reasons. Let me explain you those reasons. So after those reasoning, you will get to know like how we use BJT. See, as if you talk about BJT in saturation, then we use it as switch on. We use it as switch on in saturation. In cutoff, we use it as switch off. So as if you want to use BJT as switch on and switch off, you can use it in saturation and in cutoff region. But as if you want to use BJT as amplifier, you can use it in forward active. Let me note it down. See in forward active, we use it as amplifier, right? We use it as amplifier. So in that base signal that we can amplify at output side. So input signal will be having lower strain an output signal will be having higher strain. So amplification that we use it in many applications, right? When it comes to reverse active in that we will be having attenuation. We will be having attenuation, right? So you will be observing see reverse active that is having application of attenuation. Now you will be observing in electronics. We don't want attenuation. Why should you provide attenuation? See, if you provide attenuation, then all you are doing is you are wasting power. So before you design circuits, you will have to think about a case in which you should not be having attenuation of signal. If you have attenuation of your signal inside your circuit, then those circuits are bad circuits that is been considered in designing of circuits. So practically, we don't have applications related attenuation when we design circuits yes obviously in some scenarios you need to have attenuation right but that comes in very few cases that's why i told we use bjt in forward active in majority of cases in some situations you can have bjt as switch on and switch off right but it is also having limited applications right so that is how i have explained things now I think I should allow second question from my student. So Anu, now you can ask your second question. Hitesh sir, what is the relationship in between the diffusion length and the width of base in transistor? So second question is there based on diffusion length and base width of BJT. This is quite interesting. Let me explain you that. See, here second question is there based on diffusion length and width of base so first of all you need to understand what is diffusion length and what is width of base see width of base let us say that is that is wb for pnp and for npn why i am writing for both the reason is first you need to understand what is diffusion length see when you diffuse pn junction at that time charge carriers are getting diffused like you see here at this junction, inside N type base, diffusion of holes will happen. And at this junction, here as P type that is getting diffused with N type, here diffusion of holes will happen over here as well. So emitter base junction that will provide diffusion over here as well as collector base junction that is also providing diffusion over here. Right, diffusion of holes will happen inside N type. So let me write that. Let us say diffusion, then LP that I need to write. LP means diffusion length as per holes. And that relation with WB that I just want to explain you in PNP. And here with P type, diffusion of electrons will happen with this P type. And that relation with WB that just that is what the case which we need to understand. Right. So first you need to understand what is the question. So question is, what is the relation in between diffusion length and width of base? 
First of all, you need to understand how diffusion length is there. See, diffusion length, if you talk about diffusion length, then that is square root of diffusion coefficient into lifetime of charge carrier. Right. So, if, if lifetime of charge carrier that is higher, then diffusion length is higher or as if you talk about diffusion coefficient, then diffusion coefficient will also explains you diffusion length. Right. Now, one more thing that you need to understand. See, this diffusion length that is also depending on doping concentration. So, here as if doping concentration of base that is higher, then diffusion length will be lower. If doping concentration of base is higher, then diffusion length will be lower. So, higher the doping concentration, lower the width of, the, lower the length of diffusion length. That is second thing that you need to understand, right. So, first is this formula and second is based on doping concentration also diffusion length is there. Now, let us come to the actual question. What should be the relation of this diffusion length and WB? See, diffusion length should be greater, very greater compared to WB. Diffusion length that should be very greater compared to WB. Why? The reason is here we use transistor in which we don't want recombination. Like when you, when you apply signal to base, at that time, at base, we don't want recombination. If recombination current is increasing, then amplification will be less. You see here I have told you in majority of cases we will be using transistor as amplifier. Right. We don't use transistor as attenuator. So as you use transistor as amplifier, you don't want recombination to take place at base. And as you don't want recombination to take place at base, diffusion length at base should be higher. So as if diffusion length at base is higher, then recombination chances are less. And as if recombination chances are less, amplification factor will increase. And as if amplification factor increases, then in applications, we can use transistor in a better way. So that is what the reason. So that is what the reason behind we should be having diffusion length should be very greater compared to width of base, right? So first of all, you should know what is diffusion length and how it depends. Diffusion length depends on doping concentration. It depends on diffusion coefficient. It depends on lifetime of carriers. So when you diffuse P and junction at the time at the side of P side, there will be diffusion of electrons at the side of N side, there will be diffusion of holes, right? So we are talking about base. So we are talking about diffusion of holes as, as if you talk about P type material of base then you will be talking about diffusion of electrons. So here controlling is happening at base and that controlling depends on recombination. If you have lower diffusion length, then recombination chances are more that we don't want over here for higher amplification. That's why you should know diffusion length in TNP and NPN transistor should be, diffusion length should be very greater. Right. If diffusion length is greater, then recombination chances are less. So that is how things are there. I hope now it is clear. Still, if anything that you like to ask, please note it down in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.